A few weeks ago, I posted a video about the Assassin 4, which is the new CPU cooler from Deepcool, and I compared it to the Noctua D15. And even though it didn't really turn out to be better than the Noctua, it did keep up with it, and it was good enough to keep the i9-3900K under control. But then, this little thing came in, and Cooler Master insisted that it should perform better than the Noctua and the Assassin 4, while being quieter than both of them, which is a pretty big and a pretty bold statement to make. So let's see how well this Master Air MA824 Stealth actually performs, and if it's worth getting it over the other two or not. Let's begin. In essence, the MA824 has a pretty typical design. It is a dual tower cooler that is combined with two fans, but they did add a nice metal top plate that does make it look more clean than the Noctua D15, for example. They went with their Mobius fans, which was a very good choice. Uh, they are built pretty well, and you can run them as low as several hundred RPMs, or even turn them off completely, if you prefer. The middle fan is a larger 135mm model, and on the side they used a smaller 120mm fan, which gives the Cooler Master slightly better memory compatibility than the Noctua D15 has. Now, the Noctua has a large front fan that sits quite high on the cooler, even with the lowest profile memory kits I could find. And with the Cooler Master, you still want somewhat low profile memory, but you have more space to work with without the fan looking completely out of place. The Assassin 4 from Deepcool has the best memory compatibility out of the three, and you can use any RAM you have in mind. Now, I am not really sure why Cooler Master went for a blue 120mm fan. Even though you might not see it as much, it is such an odd color choice in my opinion. I mean, they maybe wanted to do something different and unique, but uh, I think it would look much cleaner if they just went with a black one instead. The total height of the cooler uh, is 166 millimeters, which makes it one millimeter taller than the D15 and two millimeters taller than the Assassin 4, but it will still nicely fit in most typical ATX cases, including the Deepcool CH510 mesh that I was using to test these coolers with. And I have to say that the installation of this cooler was very easy as well, um, even with an already built system, and I didn't even have to remove the graphics card. Uh, you just install the mounting bracket, uh, you place the cooler on top, and then just tighten it with the two screws on top. Uh, you don't need an extra long screwdriver like you do with the other two coolers, and you don't need to remove the middle fan. Now, technically, you don't really need to remove the front fan either, but I really recommend you do that because uh, that way you can easily control how close the fan will be to your memory modules. You do need to put it back using the typical fan brackets, but that's not that difficult as it is a side fan after all. So let's see how this cooler performs. For the test, I'll be using the same build as I did for the two previous coolers. Uh, it is an i9-3900K based system with a Z790 motherboard and a tough RX 7900 XTX graphics card. And all that is nicely tucked into this uh, Deepcool CH510 mesh case. It is a pretty typical mid-sized tower case with a 120mm fan in the back, but there are no fans in the front. So while stressing the CPU with a 30 minute long blender workload, uh, what you want to see is that the CPU is sitting close to its uh, 253 watt TDP. Uh, if you use a weaker cooler, it will drop a lot lower than that. So with this MA824, the 3900K kept a slightly higher average power level than under other two coolers. It is a very small difference, but it did lead to a slightly higher average clock speed and a slightly higher Cinebench score. Looking at the temperatures, the Cooler Master sits slightly below the Assassin 4 and the D15. Uh, they're still all running in the mid to high 80s, so if you have or if you're planning to build a system that is very similar to the one I'm using, I would definitely add a couple of extra fans to the case. But what I found really impressive is that the Master Air ran the whole system quieter than the other two. It ended up being one decibel below the Noctua D15 and a bit over two decibels below the Assassin 4 which might not sound like a lot, but it is actually a very noticeable difference. But let's see what happens while gaming uh, when we add some extra heat coming from the GPU as well. 
In Cyberpunk 2077 on 1440p, the CPU was drawing around 125 watts of power, and with the Cooler Master, we ended up with the same CPU temperature as with the Noctua D15, which is a few degrees lower than the Assassin 4 from Deepcool. It also matched the Noctua in motherboard and case temperatures, which is again just below the Deepcool. And since they were running at a similar noise level as well, for this use case, I would say it's basically a tie with the Noctua D15. So when we put all of this together, we got similar results in gaming, uh, slightly better results in CPU workloads, and slightly better noise levels. But for this cooler to make sense over the other two, the price needs to be competitive as well. In the US, the Cooler Master is doing quite okay. It is selling for $100 right now, which is a lot, but that's the same amount as you would have to set aside for the Assassin 4, and it is $10 below the regular brown D15 and $20 below the D15 Chromax Black that I used for this video. Here in the Netherlands, however, the Master Air will cost you 115 euros, which is the same as the D15 Chromax Black, and it is about 15 euros more expensive than the Assassin 4 from Deepcool. And to be honest, the pricing doesn't seem too unreasonable, especially when we consider how well this cooler performs. But it is still a lot of money for an air cooler, and uh, if they're going against a brand like Noctua, I do think they should consider matching their service as well. So Cooler Master here offers a five-year-long warranty, which is above average, but it falls a tiny bit short compared to Noctua's six years of warranty, plus the promise of uh, sending you new mounting kits for any sort of future sockets for free. So I would love to see Cooler Master do that as well, because I'm pretty sure that they can, or they can just have the price come down a bit further, uh, especially in the EU, which would make it an instant recommendation over the other two. Because as a product, this cooler is pretty impressive. It manages to handle a 250 watt CPU. It outperforms the Noctua D15, just as they promised, while being quieter, and it is really easy to install it. So if you're looking for a big and powerful air cooler for your next build, this is definitely the one to keep your eye on. Now, that's all I have for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards, and as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and for sticking to the end. Uh, if you like this video and if you want to make sure you never miss my future uploads, do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!